Welcome to Electro Online. We're now starting a new chapter in electrical engineering on operational amplifiers, also called op amps. And here we have a, an illustration of what an op amp is. It's an eight pin device, numbers one through eight. Notice the little notch right here, which indicates the correct location of the pin number one. They are for balance, then the two inputs, the inverting and the non-inverting inputs. And I didn't even spell that right. This should be inverting, I'm missing a V here. So let's put the V in there, inverting input. The negative voltage, the positive voltage here on pin seven, we have the balance and the output, and then pin eight has no connection at all, so that has no function except for mechanical sturdiness to an extra pin to hold the component down on the circuit board. Notice that here's the schematic of the seven pins. Obviously the eight pin is not included. Notice pin two and three are what we call the inverting and non-inverting inputs. Here we have the output, and then the voltage, the plus and the minus voltage applied, and then we'll talk about these two pins later, the offset and the null pin. The basic operation can be simplified by talking about what we call the ideal op amp, the ideal operational amplifier. And to make it ideal, to make it easier than to work with it, than to work with the circuit of the operational amplifier, we're going to talk about the two basic characteristics which simplify the concept. First of all, the potential difference between the inverting and non-inverting terminals is very small. We can include that or we can simply ignore it and consider it to be zero. And that really simplifies the problem. So what we're going to do is assume that the potential difference between these two pins is zero. The next thing we're going to talk about is the currents at the inverting and non-inverting terminals are also very small. The currents going in and out of these two terminals right here they're very small, and so therefore we can also consider them to be zero. And when we do that, you'll find that it's a lot easier to work with the circuitry around an operational amplifier and to try and calculate amplification of, of the amplifier and to be able to work out the circuitry. We'll see in just a moment how that's done on some follow-up videos. To summarize, all we need to do for an operational amplifier is to realize that the potential difference between these is virtually zero, consider them to be zero. The input currents of these two uh, pins, two and three, can be considered to be zero. The operational amplifier typically amplifies the signal and it is able to invert the signal if you needed to, depending upon how you hook up the circuit. And in the videos to come, we'll show you how the operational amplifier is actually used. And that's the basics about the operational amplifier.